Now, I will start this group action of the piles. So, this is a pile and this is your pile cap. There is soil in between. This is your frictional resistance and this these are individual piles. So, it is difficult to provide single pile as a foundation. Hence, in practical purpose, in practical purpose, the structural load the structural load is supported by pile groups. Now, let us consider a single pile, the physics this is a single pile. There is a group of pile here it is Q and there is a pile cap if I draw the pressure valve of individual piles this is how your zone of influence. <coughs> Considering single pile, the pressure valve has been drawn. Considering group of pile, this is how your pressure valve will come. So, this is called isobar of group of piles and this is isobar of single pile. Now, it may possible while providing this group of piles or piles in a group, you can provide closely spaced. Once you provide closely spaced, what will happen once it is a closely spaced? There is a overlapping of the piles. So, this is more dangerous or you can provide not closely spaced, then you can make it with a spacing will be more. So, that it can be allowable, it can be allowable for this case of your group of pile more load can be taken. So, if I can write when a pile are spaced a sufficient distance apart, piles in a group are spaced sufficient 
apart the group capacity the group capacity may approach the sum of individual capacity may approach the sum of individual capacity if piles are closely spaced closely spaced the stress transmitted by piles the stress transmitted by piles to soil may overlap now let us consider what will happen spacing of the piles in a group spacing of piles in a group it depends on overlapping of adjacent piles cost of foundation then efficiency of pile group spacing of the pile in a group it depends upon the overlapping of adjacent pile cost of foundation efficiency of pile groups now what is efficiency of pile group let me start with this group efficiency so if i write it group efficiency with eta into g symbol this is equal to q u into g divided by q u into n into 100 so q u g is equal to ultimate load bearing capacity of a pile group pile group q u is equal to ultimate load bearing capacity of single pile single pile n is equal to number of piles in a group now this is the definition of the group efficiency of piles eta g is equal to q u g q u g means group q u g is your ultimate load bearing capacity of a pile group q u is equal to ultimate load bearing capacity of a single pile of a single pile and n is equal to number of piles in a group number of piles in a group i can write it in such a way that eta g group capacity or group efficiency q u g divided by n divided by your q u into 100 what does it mean if you look up, look at here group efficiency ultimate load capacity of a pile group divided by number of piles divided by ultimate capacity of the single pile what does it mean what it is physical significance it is equal to equal to the ratio 
of the average load average load per pile in the group at which failures failure occurs to the ultimate load of a compressible single pile to the ultimate load of a compressible single pile so the meaning is it is equal to the ratio of average load per pile in a group average load per pile in a group at which failure occurs to the ultimate load of the single pile basically if i take a group of pile what is the average load taken by individual pile in that group and it has to be compared with your ultimate load of the single pile if spacing should be such that you see the spacing should be such that spacing should be such that the efficiency or the group efficiency is the group efficiency is 100% spacing should be such that the group efficiency is your 100% now this is about the group efficiency now let us start with this pile groups in sand or gravel pile groups in sand and gravel so for end bearing let us say for end bearing for driven piles bearing on dense compact sand with spacing equal to or greater than 3b by d for driven piles the spacing equal to or greater than 3 b by d d is diameter b is your width of the pile group so this group capacity equal to sum of individual pile capacity that means if i can write it qg is equal to n qu then efficiency is equal to 100% so spacing to diameter so spacing is less than 3b by d or 3d if spacing is less than 3d then you can consider group capacity then group capacity can be found out by considering block failure now second part is your first one is your end bearing second part is your friction piles so if i write it friction piles qg is equal to Q u into group divided by n into Q u into hundred, which is equal to for friction pile F s into P g 
into L into 100 divided by N Fs P into L. So, Pg is equal to perimeter of block. Let me draw it. This is a cap. These are the piles. So, perimeter means perimeter of the block. This is my B, this is my L, then you have to find it out perimeter of the block PG, P is equal to small p is equal to perimeter of single pile, L is equal to length of the pile, length or we can write it embedded length, embedment length of pile, F s is equal to unit skin friction. So, pile groups in sand and gravel, if I summarize, first case is your end bearing, second case is your frictional pile. In end bearing, generally for driven piles, spacing should be greater than equal to 3 D, 3 times diameter of the pile. Then you have to consider group capacity is equal to sum of individual pile capacity. Then in that case, if group capacity is equal to sum of individual capacity, in that case, efficiency is equal to 100 percent. So, spacing, if spacing is less than 3D, then group capacity can be calculated by considering as a block failure. Now, for friction piles, if friction piles are there, in this case, these are the friction piles, only frictional resistance around the periphery. So, group efficiency is equal to ultimate bearing capacity, ultimate capacity of the group into number of piles into ultimate capacity of the single piles, which is equal to F s frictional resistance P g perimeter of the group. If this is my the group, if this is the spacing is 3 d and this spacing is 3 d. So, this is the perimeter of the group into L, L is your embedment length of the pile divided by number of piles. F s is equal to unit skin friction, P is equal to perimeter into L is equal to length of the pile. So, this is the case pile groups in sand and gravel. Another formula has been given, group efficiency also can be obtained from can be obtained from the converse Lavare equation. What is this equation? 1 minus n minus 1 into m plus m minus 1 into n divided by m n into theta by 90. So, m is equal to number of rows of pile n is equal to number of piles in a row theta is equal to tan inverse d by s 
d is equal to diameter of pile s is equal to spacing of pile. This is another group efficiency which has been given by converse and Labar equations ng is equal to 1 minus n minus 1 into m plus m minus 1 into n divided by m n into theta by 90 m is equal to number of rows of piles n is equal to number of piles in a row theta is equal to tan inverse d by s d is equal to diameter of pile s is equal to spacing of the piles. Now, let us go to the pile groups in a clay. Pile groups in clay how to find it out group capacity? There are two ways means first considering or assuming group may fail as block assuming as a block failure. Second one is your assuming as individual pile failure. So, considering both the cases whichever the minimum smallest one or smaller of the two values is actually the capacity. So, pile groups in clay how to find it out first you consider as if it is a block failure find it out the capacity second you consider as if it has been failed by individual single piles find it out the capacity then compare both this value smaller one is your group capacity. So, let us consider first one block failure. It has been observed that block failure occurred when spacing s is less than equal to 3 times pile diameter. So, in this case what will happen? There is a pile group here. This is your QG this is your embedded length L then if I take it So, this is how your perimeter. So, generally block failure occurred when spacing is less than equal to 3D, then in this case Q u of group capacity is equal to C n c a g plus alpha p g l c bar c is equal to cohesive strength of clay beneath the pile group C bar is equal to average cohesive strength of clay around the group L is equal to length of the pile
P g is equal to perimeter of pile group. A g is equal to sectional area of the group. group alpha is equal to your cohesion factor n is equal to number of piles. So, considering block failure, considering block failure, how do you find it out group capacity? C n c a g, c is equal to cohesive strength of clay beneath the pile group, c bar is your average cohesive strength of the clay around the pile group, L is equal to length of the pile, P g is equal to perimeter of the pile group, A g is equal to sectional area of the group, alpha is equal to cohesion factor, n is equal to number of piles. So, second one is your considering individual piles. In that case, q u g is equal to n number of piles into bearing capacity of single pile. Considering individual piles means as if it will fail by the way individual pile has been failed. So, considering individual piles, so it will be ultimate bearing capacity of the single pile into number of piles. So, n c is your bearing capacity factor for group of piles. Once you find it out pile groups in clay considering block failure and considering an individual pile capacity, find it out both the capacity compare and the smaller one is your group capacity of the piles in a group. This is what I have started for today group action in the pile and in this group action there are two cases has been considered first one is your group efficiency, then second one is your how to find it out pile groups in sand and gravel. In sand and gravel considering end bearing as well as friction pile, second one is your pile groups in clay, how to calculate pile groups in clay group capacity, first one is your assuming as a block failure, second one was your is your assuming as an individual pile failure, then find the capacity for both the cases compare and smaller one is your group capacity. So, I will stop it here, next class I will solve one example, how to find it out pile group capacity in clay, then I will go for pile groups settlement in clay. Thank you.